our gathering hymn this afternoon is 477. There's a Wideness in God's Mercy, song number 477. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Foolish souls like scattered sheep, running in every direction, or running from, or perhaps just turning away, oftentimes is a response when we walk in valleys of darkness, when we feel almost overwhelmed. We'll hear about the experience of being overwhelmed in today's gospel but we also hear the invitation of the shepherd who gives us rest beside restful waters, who sets the table a banquet before us. The psalmist's words are fulfilled preeminently in the Eucharist. It is to this banquet, it's to the refreshment of his word that the good shepherd who gathers the scattered invites us. And so let us acknowledge our sins and thus prepare ourselves for the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd who never leaves his flock untended. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the repentant. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, 
we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that, made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people, you have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all, <clears throat> excuse me, from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. and green are the pastures where he gives me repose near restful waters he leads me he revives my i 
goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for the length of days unending. The Lord is my shepherd, there is no A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. He who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. And so they went off in a boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. And when he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. There are so many foundational truths in the scriptures today. As first of all, Paul reminds us in his letter, the second reading today, that there's no them in us. In his body on the cross, Jesus unites it all so that the cries of one become the cries of all. As the Constitution on the Church of the Second Vatican Council said, the joys and the hopes, as well as the pain and the suffering, of all the human family become the joys and hopes, the pains and sufferings endured by those who are followers of Christ. In the document Gaudium et Spes, joy and hope. We cannot necessarily, as we've been reflecting in past weeks, accomplish all we set ourselves to. We cannot manipulate results. We cannot always have every attempted effort match our hopes we can persevere. 
We can reflect on all situations of life where I am at this time, what is God calling me to? The exact opposite of let somebody else do it or what difference can I make? There are so many. In the gospel today, Jesus speaks about the importance of going apart, of resting. Many people in our society today don't know how to rest. They either just collapse and do nothing, usually in front of a computer screen or a television, and think that's rest, where it's anything but. The mind is running a mile a minute, or, is, or the soul is being filled with filth. For others, rest means just substituting some sorts of stuff for other sorts of stuff. So this invitation of the Lord I take up and reflect with you in my pastor's letter this week. I urge you to take the bulletin somewhere, relax, and read it through. For Jesus has an important message to us about learning how to truly rest. But then I believe the gospel invites us to confront something else that happens in our life, and I believe in the situation of our world today, it might be something that many of us are feeling. And that's what to do when you're overwhelmed. There they go, they're ready to rest, all of a sudden there's all the people, and Jesus pities them. They were like sheep without a shepherd, and he begins to do what he can for them. What do we do when we feel overwhelmed? Overwhelmed by the situations within our country and around the world. Shut it off? Or do we look for the ways that you and I can respond with the corporal and spiritual works of mercy? Those are more than just lists some of us memorized in a catechism class. They are the way that we can compassionately live as other Christ today. We recently rejoiced as those trapped in the cave in Thailand were rescued and united in prayer for the soul of the man who tragically lost his life trying to save them. The attention of the world was on those few children. It was very dramatic and we should have paid attention. And yet why is it that that event drew the attention of the world But the, the ongoing problem of genocide, of people being put to death for refusing to renounce their faith, of human trafficking, which includes the sale and use of five and six-year-old children to satisfy lusts. What about the daily occurrences in countries around the world that we just get used to or become oblivious to? What about the silent cries of children torn from their mother's wombs or the vocal cries of children torn from their parents' arms at the borders of our nation? And when one, well, one might try to find refuge in, well, Things need to be put in order. Things need to be done. The end never justifies the means. That's a foundational teaching of Jesus Christ. The end never justifies the means. We cannot seek to proclaim ourselves pro-life and hear the silent cries of the innocents slaughtered in their mother's womb and yet not see consistently we must hear the voices of all those who cry out. We cannot become social activists for those whom we see around us and let those silent sufferers be forgotten because it's been so many years. Wrong is still wrong, no matter how long people look the other way and ignore it. How aware are we of the hundreds and thousands and millions of people whose tragedies don't even get our attention. And when we do hear a cry, is our first thought, how many am I not hearing? When we see a tragic news story, how many other stories are not covered because they happen too often? A very unlikely person that a Catholic priest would quote in a pulpit would be the Russian dictator Joseph Stalin. But what he said, a 
unfortunately, is all too true today. He turned to the U.S. ambassador once and said, the death of one man is a tragedy. The death of millions is a statistic. And yet, sadly, the inherent dignity of the human person is severely compromised in our time, if not outwardly, outrightly denied. And it can be overwhelming. And yet today, we ask the Lord to inspire in us the appropriate response. There are those who, whether directly or supporting those who are, are exercising the corporal works of mercy. Right here, in our own parish, among our Hispanic community, are those who fear what tomorrow will bring. Those who specialize in immigration law have made themselves available and have been very helpful. Those who live in fear have had the consolation of those around them, not only praying for them, but daily showing compassionate care. Rather than jumping in some political agenda or behind some political person or wasting our breath on praising or criticizing, which can distract us from the object of our attention, the innocent, the vulnerable, the weak, we do not have to figure out if people are guilty of this, that, or the other thing. Many people that Jesus reached out to, many people that Jesus gave priority to, had their sets of guilt and had their past, and that was dealt with. But first, there was compassionate embrace. I think of Zacchaeus, where everybody else was mumbling about what a cheat he was, how much money he swindled, and on and on and on, and the defamation of his character. And yet Jesus saw a future full of hope, and embracing him, called him down. And Zacchaeus then said, if I've defrauded anybody, I've repaid them fourfold. He's done all he could. He can't change the past. He was hoping for a future. And Jesus gave it to him. And we, his disciples, are called to do the same. Whether it's by our fervent prayer, by our urging of those in authority to do what is right and just and true, whether it be to support the works of Catholic Relief Services, Catholic Charities USA, all of which through Annunciation House at the borders, or whether it be through the outreach in Central America to help people who are suffering and are living in unbearable situations that lead them to flee as refugees. We don't simply stand in judgment at a border. We need to seek to reach the reasons that people flee from all that they have known and loved and come as strangers, which even if welcomed with open arms, is a difficult place to be in. All of us can do something. None of us can do everything. All of us can make this a priority in our prayer. All of us can let this situation in our world today awaken us to be more attentive to what's around us and to show the respect for the dignity of human persons, to show the compassionate hope that Jesus gives for the hopeless when we encounter them. Now indeed, the death of one man is a tragedy. The death of millions is a statistic. I hope our hearts resound with a resilient no and our lives act upon what we say. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begot and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. The world to come. Amen. Let us in hope bring our needs to God. That the open doors of our church every day will be a sign of welcome to those seeking peace, hope, and in reality, deeper relationship with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who minister in our parish in outreach, liturgical ministry, fellowship, and faith formation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the commitment to make time in these summer days to draw closer to God, to go apart and to be refreshed and renewed, and to deepen family relationships, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing where there are grudges and divisions, for the humility it takes to initiate such efforts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the dead, especially Edward Biles, for whom this Holy Mass is offered, and for all who long to see the face of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we ask all this of you, Father, in confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us as we prepare our gifts this afternoon with song number 468, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Song number 468. In 
Brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that each what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may <clears throat> benefit the salvation of all <clears throat> through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. By rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, and with one voice, we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Then in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy and welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
side to be reborn. I am the bread that comes from heaven above. I am the vine that fills your cup with joy. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Take and the captives free. I am the life that raises up the As you leave this evening, there's a table set outside. If you'd like to get your ticket for the upcoming 2020 Club and have uh, 20 weeks of drawing chances, $20, and the bonus drawings as well. So if you've yet to get your ticket, we'll be selling them after Mass only for a short time. So uh, please stop by. And again, thank you to those who already have. 
Those in middle school and high school notice a, a very obvious announcement in the bulletin about Bible, Fries, and Five Guys that gets underway next Sunday night at 6 o'clock and is open to all young people in middle and high school. There's all kinds of other details in the bulletin. I want to thank those who overwhelmed me uh, with your response to investing time and talent. Not so much that you even responded, but we have so many really gifted people in this community and placing those gifts at the service of the one who gave them. Uh, it was edifying to me. All week while I was at the conference uh, in West Virginia, which by the way, thank you for your prayers for seminary and Joe and I, the conference was probably the best thing I've been to since I was ordained a priest. I didn't know what to expect. It was in West Virginia. Now I'm gonna date myself, but all I could think of was country roads, take me home. West Virginia, mountain mama. I didn't wanna meet any mountain mamas. Um, West Virginia was absolutely gorgeous, the place. Um, and hopefully you will uh, enjoy the fruit of very powerful days with three of the leading uh, scripture exegetes um, in the world today. Uh, here in our own country. Three powerful men of faith. Um, many of you know Scott Hahn, Brant Petrie, and uh, John, uh, uh, John Bergsman. Uh, we were overwhelmed by what we received. So uh, thank you for your prayers for us in that. So the bulletin has all the other stuff. If you're a visitor guest, welcome to Portsmouth, welcome to New Hampshire Seacoast, and especially welcome here to the parish of Corpus Christi. Grab our bulletin, read about the rest, and may the second message of the Sunday's Gospel take root in all our lives as we spend a little time looking at the pastor's musings this week. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord. Lead those you've imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Please join in singing song number 724, Rejoice, the Lord is King, song number 724. Rejoice, the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Rejoice, give thanks and sing, and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say. our saints, he took his seat above. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. His kingdom cannot fail, he rules o'er earth and heaven. Of death and hell are to our Jesus given. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again. I say, rejoice, rejoice in glorious hope. Our Lord and Judge shall come and take his servants up to their eternal home. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, 